Hi, my name is Yogesh Lala. I'm one of the critical care fellows here at Western University. I have given this talk at the ultra rounds, which are afternoon rounds that occur as part of the point of care ultrasound course, or rotation, I should say, that's put on by Dr. Arnfield. This talk is really for those residents who are going through this rotation as a way of picking up on signs of alveolar consolidation. This talk assumes that you know um, some basic technique when it comes to lung ultrasound, probe positioning, uh, etc. Now, alveolar consolidation, as described by really a pioneer of ultrasound, Daniel A. Lichtenstein, is a fluid disorder. So essentially anything can fill an alveoli, whether it be blood, transidate, water, and exudate, etc., and that may cause alveolar consolidation. In the case of an alveoli that is fluid filled, individual alveoli are too small to be visualized by ultrasound. However, contiguous alveoli tend to be filled at the same time, and each of these Groups of contiguous alveoli are encased by interstitial tissue known as the interlobular septa. And together, the interlobular septa and the fluid-filled alveoli contained within those septa produce a macroscopic image on ultrasound. So to give you a better pictorial representation of this, we see here an interlobular septa as indicated by the two arrows here and here. This space here would of course be filled with contiguous alveoli. Filling these alveoli with fluid or consolidating them would provide a macroscopic image on ultrasound. Now, Lichtenstein describes that the interlobular septa by themselves are more echoic than the contents of the alveoli. But what we see ultrasonographically are a combination of the interlobular septa as well as the fluid-filled alveoli. And really, consolidation on ultrasound is an alveolar interstitial syndrome. Alveolar consolidation by way of ultrasound can be further divided into what's called translobar or non-translobar consolidation. And each of these entities yields a specific sign. In the case of translobar consolidation, we have what's called the tissue-like sign. And in the case of non-translobar consolidation, we have this shred sign. I will give you some images as we go along in this talk to help you further orient yourself. As you may have already seen these signs, but not recognize what they were specifically. The tissue-like sign, as I mentioned before, is created when we have translobar consolidation. In this case, alveoli in an entire lobe are consolidated or fluid-filled and with the interlobular septa, they create a pattern which we call the tissue-like sign. Some of you going through the rotation may have already heard of the term hepatization of lung, or when you just look at it on the ultrasound, the lung looks quite like liver. Lichtenstein, in one of his articles, describes in these specific words, it looks like liver. So here we have the tissue-like sign uh, represented pictorially. And as you can see here, the lung parenchyma looks awfully similar to the liver parenchyma. And it assumes the pattern on ultrasound of the liver. Notice here, though, that lung dimensions are maintained. 
as you can see here, you're seeing lung mark, you're seeing evidence that there's lung all the way out from the diaphragm, the anterior chest wall, the posterior chest wall, etc. You are also not seeing any pleural effusion here. An example of the tissue-like sign taken from our ICU here, this is the left plaps view. Over here we can appreciate there would be spleen. This is the lung here, anterior chest wall, diaphragm, posterior chest wall, lung. Notice the maintenance of lung dimension. There are some air bronchograms here and very minimal pleural effusion. The lung architecture here or echogenicity looks very similar to what we would expect on scan of the liver. The next side represents this a little bit better here. We have liver, diaphragm, a little bit of perihepatic fluid, maintenance, relative maintenance of lung architecture Notice that the lung parenchyma looks awfully similar to the liver parenchyma. And here you can see it go with the respirations of the patient. Now the other sign we talked about is the shred sign. It's a non translobar consolidation and it represents the boundary between aerated and consolidated lung. Now this boundary um, is irregular. Lichtenstein describes it as being a fractal border that is fully opposed to the lung line. Interestingly, non translobar consolidations make up the bulk of cases that people see when scanning lungs. And you may have already seen signs like this and they typically tend to occur more so on the anterior chest walls. So here it is, the shred sign. This image is taken from Lichtenstein's book Lung Ultrasound and the Critically Ill. The probe in this position is oriented longitudinally. It's demonstrating here the border between aerated lung and consolidated lung. There are two borders here. There is a deep border and a superficial border. I'll show you a better image of that in the slides to come. But it's important to note that the deep border here appears to be shredded and hence this is called the shred sign. It is typical of alveolar consolidation in the non translobar form. Now, here's an example of the shred sign. And here we see a deep irregular border. And that is a fractal border or shred border, shredded border where we are at the boundary of aerated and consolidated lung. This image is taken from the left anterior chest wall position. Now here we are. The blue arrow points to what is considered the superficial border of the pleural line. The orange represents the deep shredded or fractal border. And this gives us the shred sign. Notice we have some beelines emanating from this border. So what's a fractal? A fractal is actually very interesting. It's mathematically speaking something that occurs. It is at every magnification similar to the previous magnification. Um, and I'm referring to patterns. So here we see a star that as you magnify it out or in, looks the same at every level. Another pictorial representation of this is here. You can imagine if you were to zoom in on any segment, it would look like the segment before. What's the importance of a fractal? For some of you movie buffs, you might really appreciate computer generated graphics and fractals are used 
somehow to produce these graphics. And if you look at this one particularly, you might get the sense that this alve this magnification of the alveoli, you know, looks kind of fractal in nature. So anyway, what are these signs good for? What are they telling us? Alveolar consolidation becomes very sensitive and specific when both of these signs are present together. 90% sensitive, 98% specific when they are both present. The sensitivity, in fact, can be improved as the experience and the technical ability of the operator improves. And what we know of lung ultrasound, lung ultrasound is far more sensitive and specific than chest radiograph at identifying consolidation. Consolidation on lung ultrasound tends to show up well before that on chest x-ray. So if you're seeing these signs while you're scanning patients, in the right clinical context, you may opt to further investigate or proceed with treatment pending, depending on what your patient's clinical status and history is. Thanks for listening. I hope this was relatively helpful. I provided some references here that you might refer to to help get a better idea of lung ultrasound. Thanks again.